struggled with fertility, infertility. So you play in your age group, ne? Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. But I, I do know it's a reality. It is. That a lot of people are facing. It is. A lot of women are facing. It is. Um, yeah, we, we, we did an interv- uh, interview on, on radio around the same topic and a lady in her 40 who's what said, said, I'm 40 and I wanted, I wanted to have a kid with my boyfriend, but I knew in my 20s, our 30s, I think she said, I knew that he wasn't the one. So mm-hmm. I was considering freezing my egg and the guy and he said, no, freeze your embryo rather. Sure. But then, you know, yeah. legally with your embryo, if you break up, I must now ask for your permission. Yo. You know, there's all this legal and technical stuff yeah. that you need to consider, you know, even with something as natural as having a baby. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, a lot of women are not aware of, of those, those technical stuff. So being self-employed, both of you, taking time off work and focusing on something like having kids um, will obviously have an impact on your income and, and, and your health. How, 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 how are you planning for that? I'll start with you, Neil. How am I planning for my health? Yeah, no, for the, 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 the day you want to have loss of kids. income at that time, or are you gonna cook? No, stay. Too low in. So a lot of savings, yeah. just to because I know it's once I get to that side, it's gonna mm. get it's gonna get more busy. Uh, it's, I'm gonna run out of time to do some of the things that I'm able to do now. Mm. Um, so I'm freely. Um, and I know it's it, it, it's going to impact me financially yeah. as well. It's not just a decision I'm going to make and everything is going to be sorted. I mean, some of the, the financial things that, I, that I've been doing would have come to a hold mm. so that I could put money there and fix there and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And for you? Sure. Um, those are the challenges of being, you know, a sole trader. Yeah. <laughs> you you really need to have a continuity plan. Um, but yeah, like like I agree with now on the savings. Mm. But you know, there's nothing like a pandemic to show you that yeah. you don't have the savings you <laughs> thought <laughs> you, you had. You had. Yeah. Because because so <laughs> because I remember at the beginning I was like, oh, it's just lockdown, 21 days, I'll mm. be fine, you know. Then they introduced the extension and i was like oh okay i'll be fine month three you're like yo um if there's no money coming in it's Mm. very difficult to now start forecasting that you'll be fine Mm. so Mm. yeah like now i said savings if we get hit by another pandemic while we're trying to fall pregnant then it's gonna be a mess it's gonna be a mess Yeah. yeah because as an entrepreneur um this this pandemic has has opened my eyes so much to the fact that we take we take it for granted yeah, a lot of times yeah, and it's it's not as i've started appreciating people that are not self-employed a bit more because like i said earlier like the stability is is something that that is it's uh, for me it's, it's just yeah. 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 especially yeah. in a pandemic mm-hmm. i mean people would ask me um hi now i want to be an entrepreneur how do i do it Can must i quit my job and i'm like no don't <laughs> hope the job stays that's a good answer that's the job answer. stays don't quit your job not yeah. now this, yeah. we, we're not stable as a world as a country as a globe mm. so you need to keep your job and to keep that stability and it's it's just, people that have um stability like that i think they're in a better place yeah absolutely so so talking about stability so stability obviously comes with you getting an income yes and and there is then the conversation of how do you protect your income Mm -hmm. so let's say you did fall pregnant you know um yes your savings are there but with a baby or uh, any sort of illness then what do you do yeah so i just i just really i'm very committed to basically the top two yeah and for me that's medical aid and um and life policies yeah but anything outside and above that, mm. no. For example, you know, your medical aid won't um, cover IVF treatments that yeah. you read about a lot, yeah. mm. and it won't. It doesn't necessarily cover the in between from from when you are adopting. Yeah. You know, there's that phase where you're not yet the legal yeah. guardian, yeah. so technically, the child you're adopting is not your dependent. Yeah. So, how do you um, you know save towards that? Mm-hmm. So. In terms of our personal cover, I think one of what people don't know is under our um, illness cover, we've got something that we call the For Women Benefit. 
So in our illness cover, you can take um, cover that pays out a single amount, tax-free, um, anything between 100 and 6 million. So with the full women benefit, what it does, it, it pays up to 50% of your total illness cover. Mm -hmm. If you have any fertility related conditions or anything like um, endometriosis, which yeah. is what was causing my, my um, miscarriages, eclampsia or stillbirth. Because mm -hmm. even when that happens, you know, I mean, my, on the medical aid I was on when I was pregnant, um, because of the complications with the first two mm. pregnancies, I was on blood thinning injections that I had to inject mm. every day. It was 400 rands. Medical aid said we don't pay. Sure. I had to do a whole bunch of blood tests. Medical aid said we can't pay. Yeah. So even though I may have had savings to buy the cot mm. to make the room beautiful, mm. there's all these other costs that are attached to having a child mm. that a lot of us don't the think about. The blind spots. The blind yeah. spots, like you said. Um, IVF, we know. You're looking at minimum 120,000 rand. Jeez. And that's one, one treatment. Session, and you're not yes. even guaranteed. You're not that even you're guaranteed. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, did you know that you could actually insure yourself for something like that? I had no idea. But yeah. I'd love to know more about it. Yeah. That's good. Go to www.omutual.co.za <laughs> <laughs> yeah. forward slash personal sure. dash cover. So it's important for all of us to actually yeah, inform absolutely. ourselves. And what's great about it is that you build your own cover. So you might say to me, you know what, Karabo, right now, if I was your advisor, mm. um, I can only afford one, two, three. Mm. And then you build what works for you right now. You've, if, if, if it in, I mean, you're 25, you know, fertility might not be an issue, but maybe your plans push out and you say, you know what, let's add it absolutely. because you don't know. Yeah. You know, you don't know what mm. you don't know. And that's the whole point of insurance for yeah. those eventualities. Yeah. Mm. Right. I think we also with insurance need to demystify that it's 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 unaffordable mm, the yeah. fact that you can curate your own meaning you know this month you'll pay 200 or 500 and when you at a better place you yeah. you know increase the cover yeah. to a thousand rand yeah. it's really something we yeah. need to let people mm. know about and it fits your lifestyle yeah. it fits mm. where you are at i mean so you can um, customize it absolutely yeah. you you it's it's our product is modular so mm -hmm. it's if you think of Legos, for instance, you bought, you put in the pieces oh, that you need nice. yeah. at that point in your life. Yeah. And, and I think that that is a big thing that we are very proud of as All Mutual, that mm -hmm. we've created this product where you pay for what you need when you need it. Mm -hmm. um, and as you as you go on, you can build into other things. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about our future cover. So our future cover basically is cover that you buy to to basically secure your health. So remember, like at 25, you're probably at the healthiest you'll be. <laughs> um, like I was thinking about my 19-year-old, who's healthy. The world is yeah. the oyster yeah. right now. But you, you know, you hit 41 and you're like, yeah. Aches when I wake pains. up, I, I need to, I need 15 minutes just to get just out to of get bed. Out. You know, because of um, issues that just yeah. pop up with age. But anyway, let's chat in the next episode. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. So there you have it. Um, I've got two young ladies that want to have four children each. Um, but we've spoken about the importance of actually sitting with an advisor on how you want to plan to provide for those children. If you've got a business, how to provide and protect your income whilst you are taking care of your young ones at birth. So we hi we've highlighted the importance of making sure that you sit with an advisor before you make any decisions. Because almost all the decisions that we make have a financial impact on them. So... If you'd like to be contacted by an advisor to take you through the information that we've chatted about today, please go to www.omutual.co.za forward slash level dash up. Level dash up. Looking forward to seeing you in our next episode when we talk about the future. Take care.